Hey guys, in the overreach of government in today's society, we have a story of, I believe it's Grace Life Church in Canada. You may have heard a story, if not, I'll give you the brief summation of it. With Canada, Canada is, is, a, is more restrictive as a country than we here are, especially us or me here in Florida. They're just more restrictive in uh, what you can and cannot do. And so they say in Canada, or they've been saying in Canada, that you cannot, as a church, meet, period. And so uh, due to COVID, blah, 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 blah. Everyone knows the story by now, right? So this church decided, you know what? The Bible says that we should not forget to meet together. And though the law of the land says one thing, we're not going to listen to the law of the land because like Peter in the first um, part of the book of Acts, he says, whether I should listen to you or not, I'm paraphrasing again, um, I need to obey God. And so God's law trumps your law. And so the church did that. They met. And as a result of it, their senior pastor was arrested and put in prison, I think, for three-ish weeks because he dared to um, to come against the elite government who says they know better than the people know. Well, as a result, the pastor gets out, and what do you think the pastor's going to do? They're like, we're going to meet. <laughs> He's like, arrest me again, we're going to meet. Um, because I still have my convictions that this virus is nowhere near as dangerous as you're saying it is, and you're unduly um, punishing uh, and restricting churches uh, for this. And so they said, so what does the government do? They double down on their position, and they, they fence in the church. Three layers, I hear. Three layers of fencing so that people can't get into the church. Um... So, what do you think the church's response is? What is the church's response in any situation just like this? The church goes underground. And this is exactly what this church is doing. They're saying, you know what? Just because you say it, we're just going to go underground. And so, uh, the, they had not disclosed, disclosed where the meeting, which is smart and wise. And they're still meeting. There's actually, I listened to a little while ago, some of the worship that they did. I think it was around 300 people. And they're meeting so, um, um, I, I, I just want to remind everyone of history here. Um, as we contemplate what we're doing today, where's history? Every time that the church is persecuted, every time that man tries to make a law that usurps the God's law and man tries to obey God, they are forced to go into hiding, into underground, and... If history has been a good example, it doesn't work for the government. The church actually grows on the persecution. It has in China. It has in all, all the communist places. I know um, I've been uh, doing research and learning about Stalin and his rise to power and what the USSR was, you know, how they persecuted. Stalin killed uh, roughly 10 million of his own people. You know, he's number one guy, second, second guy, not number one. He's the second most killed person, killed number of people. Uh, terrible. But, and he persecuted Christians like crazy. Christianity, though he tried to get stomped out in that place, still grew. I mean, did it initially dwindle? Yeah, because here's my, th here's my theory is when persecution hits the church, those that were on the fringes to begin with, they depart. They give up. They fall to the pressure, and um, they just they crumble and fall. Those that are at the core of the that the it's like a remnant, they actually dig in and create a, a stronger mass. You know, like a ball is crushed. That pressure pressurizes them, and they become a stronger, powerful, more dedicated, more on fire uh, community of believers. And in every situation that I can see within history where the church has been persecuted, that's what happens. Those, we call them lukewarm, the fringe Christians fall off. Those that weren't really truly believing the, that, but they just had sort of like, the Bible says, a form 
of godliness, but they deny its power. Those type of people fall off. But here's the security, right? Here it is. The core gets stronger. Persecution actually makes you stronger. Not that you want persecution. Who wants to be persecuted? I've said this before. No one does. But it produces fruit in you that you can't produce yourself. And so God, who does not tempt you, God, who doesn't condone evil, will use that, though, as a tool and a resource to make you better. He does. And, and if we're wise and understanding of all this, we may disagree. We might say this is terrible. No, why has God allowed these things to happen? Bad people, bad, bad God. Well, God's using it, and he's, and he's helping you to grow, if we're truthfully honest. And we have this church here who, I guarantee you, they are singing stronger, bolder. Their faith is more firm than it's ever, ever been. Been. Why? Because they're facing the persecution giant and they're coming on top. They are um, they are being victorious and that victory shows them that greater is he that is in them, God, than he does in the world. The temptations, the ideologies, all that stuff. So when persecution comes our way, which it is. I mean, if we, if we look at America right now and the condition and the the way society has since the 1960s, the morality of society has just dropped. And so secularism and all that comes along with those th uh, th those things, you know, the, the, all the other things, progressive Christianity, cancel culture, all of them, they start rising. What happens is the fringes of Christianity start falling away. And the core get stronger. So I get excited in the sense to say, okay, when persecution comes, I don't want to do things that cause persecution. There's things that you can do to just, you know, you're rubbing people the wrong way. Um, but when persecution comes for the right reasons, you can rejoice in it. Rejoice when all these things happen to you. Because you know that produces good things in you produces good things. So this church, um, under this video, I, I get nobody. I get this. But if it ever got to you guys, go for it. Congratulations and being able to say, I suffered for the Lord. And you should rejoice and be glad in it. That you are counted worthy by God the Father to be, to suffer for him. And this is a small way, really, right? I mean, it's not like you're being put before a firing squad. Hopefully you never are. But you stood your ground and you did what was right. Now, we can, we can fight the merits of how far should government over, uh, reach into the, the private lives of their citizens. And I think I say they have overreached this point. They have overreached. It's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. Government should stick their nose out of the church. Stick it out. You know, any business governing a private um, religious body. No. Unless they're doing something that actually truly is harming people. And there is enough evidence, and this video is not about COVID, there's enough evidence about this pandemic, plandemic, as, I like, as I've heard other people call it, which I think is funny, um, to cause reasonable doubt in any person to seeing it. There's enough evidence enough um, uh, questionable data to give plausible whoa what's this about to think hey you're shutting us all down for what statistics I think they did the right thing I think you guys did the right thing Grace Life Church you did the right thing chin up keep fighting the good fight you are encouraging all of us and that is a good thing to stand up and do what is right God bless you guys bye bye